Okay, time for the hardest part of Math 174. We're going to learn how to count. Uh, so combinatorics, which is fancy counting, it's the branch of mathematics that studies counting the elements of finite sets. And I know what you're thinking. Why does counting need its own branch of mathematics? Can't I just list all the objects that I care about and count them manually? Uh, and my answer to that is, sure. Go ahead and list all the 63 element subsets of the set of integers between 1 and 100 and tell me how many there are. And if you're thinking to yourself, well, I don't want to do that, then you got the idea. Uh, it's good that we have this systematic way of counting when the numbers are too big to list everything out individually. Uh, so we've already seen a few places where we'd like to know how many of some object there are. Uh, we'd like to know how many rows there are in a truth table. We'd like to know how many subsets there are of a given set. We'd like to know the number of steps it takes for a program to run. And we'd like to know the number of finite sequences from a given set, uh, also called lists or arrays. So warning before we get started, uh, the stuff that we're going to do in this unit uh, requires that you have a solid grasp of sets, sequences, summations, and induction. If that's something that you've been a little rusty on, you're strongly encouraged to review that material before proceeding. Uh, the stuff we do in this chapter is not very difficult, but then once we start to get into the weeds later, you're going to really wish you remembered your sets and your induction. All right, so what we're going to talk about in this uh, lecture slide, or whatever we're calling these, is the fundamental counting principles of enumeration, addition, and multiplication. Uh, so enumeration, which I just kind of trash talked, is listing out all of the elements that need to be counted. Uh, they are then counted uh, manually or by noting a pattern during the enumeration. Uh, so I kind of, like I said, trash talk them a little bit because if you have very big numbers, enumeration is going to be a bad choice. But if you have small numbers, enumeration is a good choice. And for any large problem, you can pare that down into a smaller problem to understand its pattern. Uh, so that's what I mean by this last sentence here, is if I ask you, for example, to enumerate all the 63, or not to enumerate, because I would never do that, but to count the number of 63 element subsets of the set of integers between one and 100, you wouldn't do that, but what you could do is you could look at the set of integers from one to seven and count the five element subsets. That's a much smaller number, and uh, it might give you a peek into what the pattern is in the larger case. So here's an example of enumeration. We've got an urn with four marbles, two are red, one is yellow, one is blue, and the two red marbles are distinguishable. We can tell those apart. Uh, so for example, let me get my pen ready here. Uh, we might denote that with big R and little r. So big R will be one of the red marbles, little r will be the other red marble. Uh, and it says, how many ways are there to draw three marbles without replacement if the order of the marbles does not matter? Oh, sorry, if the order of the marbles it does matter. So let's do this systematically, right? If you just kind of start throwing items on the board, uh, it gets really easy to lose your place. It gets really easy to uh, wonder if you've caught everything. So let's go in a systematic order here. I'm going to start by letting my first marble be the big red one. All right, maybe this is labeled red one or something like that. Um, so my first marble is going to be the big red one. And then now I'm not putting it back because it's without replacement and the order matters. Okay, so my second marble is going to have to be a different one. So let's let that be little red. Okay, and then I have to pick a third marble. My last two choices are blue and yellow. So I'm gonna pick blue. Okay, and this is one of the items that I'm trying to count. Uh, so let's go back to my first marble choice. I chose the big red one first, and I didn't have to choose blue as my third one, right? I could still choose little red as my second one, but I didn't have to choose blue as the third. I could have just as easily chosen yellow. And so that gives me a different item. Uh, I choose big red first. I could have chosen blue as my second one, and then I would have had two choices for my third one. Uh, let's pick big red again because I'm not done exhausting all of these options. I could have picked yellow as my third choice. Uh, sorry, as my second choice. But now this is the last option for my second choice, right? Because I've done little red. I've done little blue, just the only blue one. Uh, and now I'm doing yellow. So I'm out of second marble choices now. Uh, my third marble can be blue or my third marble can be uh, the other red one. Uh, something terrible happened.
Let's try that again. What did I say this is going to be? This is going to be a little red. Okay, great. Um, so that's the six options that arise if I pick the big red marble to be my first one. But that wasn't my only choice, right? I could also have picked the little red marble to be my first one. I could have picked the little blue marble to be my first one. And I could have picked the little yellow marble to be my first one. Um, and I'm going to go through the same process for all of my other first choices. Um, so maybe I do the big red one second. And then I could do blue or yellow third. And since the order matters, these are different objects than the counterparts up here, right? So this order and this order are different. So imagine you're playing some game where, let's say you win more money if you get the blue one second, right? Uh, so that would be a, make these two different. Um, what else do I have? I could pick blue second. I could pick yellow second. And that's all the ones that start with the little red marble. Uh, and then I start with the blue marble. I can pick the big red one second. I then have the option to do the little red one third or the yellow one third. Uh, I can do the little red marble second. It's hard not to click the wrong thing on this pen. I'm trying though. Uh, and then I could let the yellow one be second. And then third, big red could be my third option or little red could be my third option. And that's all the combinations that start with the blue marble. Uh, and then all the permutations that start with the yellow marble are gonna go in this fourth row here. And hopefully you might've already figured out how many I'm gonna have. Um, kind of seeing what sort of geometric pattern starts to come up here. So I had four choices for my first marble. And then it's apparent that once I picked my first marble, I had four choices did I just say four choices? I had six choices uh, for the orderings based on my first marble. And then four times six is going to be 24, which is the answer to the question. Uh, so notice what I did there. I, I did the enumeration, but then I didn't actually end up counting them manually. I noticed that a pattern started to occur. I noticed I had four choices for the first marble and then one choice uh, six choices for the ordering based on the first marble. And so that means there's four times six or 24 options in total. Uh, that's gonna come up again in just a minute here. We're gonna, we're gonna see this arise again. Um, so stay tuned for that. All right. Um, so after we talk about enumeration, we're going to talk about kind of looking at counting in terms of set theory. Uh, so when we speak loosely in English, we use the word event to describe anything that may happen, including nothing. An outcome is something that leads to an event happening. Uh, for example, an event is you pass math 174. If we're thinking about what grades lead to this event happening, and we're going to discretize that because this is discrete math, uh, the options are you get a 70, you get a 71, you get a 72, so on, you get a 99, or you get a 100. In combinatorics, we're going to regard events as sets, and outcomes are the elements of those sets. So here's kind of the main idea. The number of ways that an event E can occur is its cardinality as a set. And remember that when we talk about the cardinality of a finite set, we're just talking about the number of elements it contains. So here's the union rule. The number of ways for an event E to occur, or, operative word there is the word or, an event F to occur is the cardinality of the union, that's why it's called the union rule, cardinality of E plus the cardinality of F minus the cardinality of E intersect F. Uh, and this is just the cardinality rule for unions. We've talked about this already, right? A um, long time ago, we talked about the cardinality rule for unions that you have to subtract this overlap off or else you're double counting it. Um, so that's just this showing up again. 
Here's an example. Um, a burrito restaurant boasts 27 different options, not counting the build your own. So there's 27 pre-made burritos at this place. Um, of these burritos, 15 are spicy, nine are vegetarian, and four are both spicy and vegetarian. How many ways can one order a burrito that is spicy or vegetarian? Uh, so we're going to use that union rule. Um, we'll as well E refer to the event that a burrito is spicy. And so the cardinal, my apologies, still getting used to the pen. The cardinality of the set E is 15. There's 15 spicy burritos. Uh, the event F is going to refer to the event that the burrito is vegetarian. And the cardinality of that set is nine. All right, so how many ways can we get a burrito that's spicy or vegetarian? Well, that's going to be the cardinality of the set E union F, which is the cardinality of E, plus the cardinality of F minus uh, that double counting, right? So uh, there's four burritos that are both spicy and vegetarian. So those four are both here and here. I don't want to count them twice. So I have to subtract that number off. Uh, so I get 15 plus nine minus four. Uh, 15 and nine make 24 minus four makes 20. So 20 of the burritos are spicy or vegetarian. Uh, the number of ways that an event E and an event F can occur is the product of the cardinalities. Um, so this, you know, merits a little bit of conversation because you might have been thinking, well, isn't and an intersection? And you wouldn't be wrong. Um, but that is when both E and F must occur simultaneously. We'd use the intersection. We're not talking about that. We're not saying that the events E and F must both occur at the same time. They need not occur at the same time. Imagine instead that some task requires you to do something from E and something from F. Then the number E times F counts the number of ways that task can be done. Um, so this is just the cardinality rule for products. The idea is if I want E and F to happen, I need to get something from E and something from F at the same time. Uh, and that's just an ordered pair of E cross F. So that's where this idea comes from. Uh, hey, look, it's the urn marble example again. Uh, two are red, one is yellow, one is blue. Uh, how many ways are there to draw three marbles without replacement? And I can think, hey, look, you know, I've got to draw three marbles, right? Well, how many options do I have for my first marble? I've got four. Red, big red, a uh, little blue, a little yellow, right? So that's... That's what that is, All right? So the cardinality of this set, that's what I get to pick from for my first one. Um, but then on the second marble, I don't have all these anymore, right? Because I've just picked one. This is really uh, frustrating. It's the button on the side of the pen is what that is. Uh, all right. So I've already picked one. Uh, let's say I picked red first, right? I picked the big red one first. So then I'm just left with a little red, a little blue, and a little yellow. Uh, so there's only three options left and I have to pick one of these and I have to pick one of these. So that's going to be multiplication. And then for my second marble, sorry, for my third marble, I only have two options left. I have to pick a first one and I have to pick a second one and I have to pick a third one. So the number of ways that that can happen is four times six which is 24. So we could have solved this problem without having to enumerate all 24 of those options like we did. Now, hopefully you're starting to see the value of this combinatoric stuff. Uh, let's do one more example. Uh, and here's an example that we actually could not enumerate, right? Because I'm not asking for a particular number. I'm asking if I have a set with an arbitrary finite number of elements, how do I know how many subsets it has? Well, we've been all semester now using the idea that a set with n elements has two to the n subsets. It's time to finally prove that. 
Uh, so here's the proof. See if I can get through writing this without making any pen mistakes. Uh, let x be such a set. Uh, I don't want to misuse some of my real estate here, so I'm not going to break that line I normally would. Uh, big X is the set x1, x2, dot, 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 xn. Uh, it's the thing about sets that once you know the size of the set, you know everything you need to know about it. Um, I don't care what these elements are. I'm going to call them x1, x2, dot, 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 xn. It does not matter what they are. Um, so suppose I want to make a subset A of X. All right. For each element of X, I make a choice. Oh, there it is. There's that pin mistake. I include, so let's call the elements xi. Let's give them a name. That'll help. For each element xi, I include xi in the subset, or I exclude xi from the subset. All right, so let's think about this. We got a set. The set has n elements, and I want to make a subset of that n element set. I have a choice. For each, for x1, I can either include x1 or exclude x1 from A. For x2, I can either include or exclude x2 from A. Uh, for x3, I can either include or exclude it. So for each of my n elements, I have two choices. Well, there are n of these, one for each element, and so that is 2 to the n. There's 2 to the n subsets. And that's it. That's all there is to it. I want to make a subset. For each element, I have to include it or exclude it. Each element gives me a rise of two choices. 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 is, of course, just to the end. That's all there is to it. Um, so that's it for enumeration, addition rule, multiplication rule. Um, we will see these rules for the rest of the combinatorics chapters, but starting in the next chapter, we're going to kind of get in on the weeds of how we can do some more arbitrary counting processes um, just using formulas and the multiplication rule and the addition rule. Um, so like I said, if you're rusty on sets and induction, please go review them. Um, other than that, keep on going.